Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to be taking a look at the complete Sherlock Holmes. Now I know I did a short overview on this uh, particular novel already, but I've been getting uh, emails and comments asking me to do a little more in-depth review. I've been getting a lot of particular questions about this uh, volume here, so we'll just jump right into it and I'll go through uh, the various questions I've had uh, regarding this volume. So we'll just quickly go over what we already know. And it's the dark brown leather cover. Um, I guess like woodish brown. And then uh, you obviously have the motif here. Uh, these particular parts here, as you can see, are contrasting. They're gold, right? And then uh, the creamy colored uh, other motifs here. As you can see here, Conan Doyle and then Sherlock Holmes. Let's see if we get that in camera there. Yeah, okay. And then the same thing at the back, 221 Baker Street there, a little motif there with the gold and cream color. And of course, like all the Barnes and Nobles, you got the gold gilding. All right. So one of the questions I got is this novel, uh, this volume, abridged or is it unabridged? Now, typically a reputable... Um, publisher will stay whether an omnibus like this, a collection of works, is abridged or unabridged. However, we can jump right in here. It does not say whether it is or is not abridged or unabridged. So that is a little unfortunate. However, as you can see here, we'll see part one. You got part two of the first book here, A Study in Scarlet, right? And then you got over here, The Sign of the Four. Take a quick look here. I hope this is all coming out on camera. It should, right? The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Memories of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, and then we go through here. We'll see. And it, all, and it ends off here with the casebook of Sherlock Holmes right here. Now, people have asked me about in terms of quality of the paper itself. It's the same as the other um, volumes of the Leatherbound Classics of uh, from Barnes & Noble. Now, let me just check something real quick of the Narnia which a lot of people have asked me about. All right, this is probably one of the nicest volumes, actually, from the Barnes & Noble Leatherbound collection. And, yeah, the paper's the same. So, in regards to the paper, it is, I believe, neutral, neutral paper. Let me just double-check that. I can't be 100% sure. So, let's just jump right in here and take a look, see if it says... That explicitly states whether it is. Um, no, it is. N I guess it is not acid-free or uh, neutral paper here. As you can see, it says down here, printed and bound in China. Uh, usually, it'll explicitly state on this part over here, neutral or acid-free paper or India paper, whatever. Um, but it is. Then it's not like it's Bible paper, but. It is probably the same thickness as normal standard stock and a half by 11 standard stock here. Uh, it is not pure white as maybe the camera can pick that out. It's a little bit creamy colored. But uh, overall it's good. These are good reading books. Uh, the leather also, it's not like the highest quality leather, but it is leather. Uh, they say it's genuine leather, so I doubt they would lie about that. And I believe it will actually say leather on that end paper here. Uh, let's just see. It does not. However, on Barnes & Noble's website, it does say that it is genuine leather. Now, unlike books, like say this particular here, this is Politics by Aristotle. I have a video uh, about this one. I'll put it in the link below if you want to take a look at it. This is from the Franklin Library. 
here. And now like this, you can tell this is high quality leather, like it's really hard. Um, this one, you can feel it's softer, which is also nice. It's nicer in the hand. Um, but you can tell that this this book is of a much higher quality, right? It has the silk and papers here, right? Very thick. And the paper itself is very, very thick, right? It's thick stock paper. And this is uh, neutral acid-free paper. Right? And like these ones here, the Franklin Mint Corporation is printed in the United States. Right? And uh, like it has to be broken in the book. If you're planning on reading these, they have to be broken in because the binding is really stiff. Same thing with the Easton Press. The Easton Press is the the exact same way of binding. Nice high quality leather. Uh, these books here, these will last a lifetime. If not much more, you could pass them down. But these, these may succumb to wear and tear. Uh, and if they're not taken care of, they will degrade like any other book. That's why you got a price tag, for example, of this book here. Uh, if they are still selling it on Barnes and Noble, it'll be eighteen plus dollars, so it'll round up to twenty dollars. While something like this from the Franklin Library or the Easton Press ranges from sixty dollars, seventy dollars to a hundred dollars, and depending on the novel, whether it's illustrations or not, will be much more. But you get what you pay for. Now, like the Easton Press and the Franklin Library, the Barnes & Noble collection books do come with a ribbon marker. Now, this is more like it is a cheaper feeling ribbon marker uh, in comparison to the high quality silk ribbon marker that the Franklin Library and the Easton Press uses. Like it's, it's actually quite thick and you could tell that it's uh, high quality. Well, so basically we went through, we saw that the paper is not the acid-free, neutral, thick stock paper, and we were not able to determine whether this is a fully abridged or unabridged volume, and we can generalize that to the other um, Barnes & Noble Leatherbound Collection books, unless it is explicitly stated on uh, within the book or on the Barnes & Noble website. If you guys want to get more information you can contact Barnes and Noble um, but if you guys are starting out a good book collection I think the best place to start is uh, Barnes and Noble because you know the Easton Press and the Frank Library they are much more expensive and the variety of books is not um, like in terms of classics you want to go with these guys here because well, they, they basically have everything that you could want. Yes, they're missing here and there a few, like for example, you know, you won't get any Aristotle or Tolkien or whatever from the Barnes & Noble. But I hope that's cleared some stuff up for you guys. Please feel free to message me or comment in the comment section down below if you have any more questions or concerns regarding anything that I have already posted. Or if you guys really want me to review a particular volume uh, from either the Easton Press, uh, the Franklin Library, or the Barnes & Noble Collection, feel free to let me know. Thank you.